Jim Jordan, the uh, the guy who is the chairman and one of the founders of the so-called Freedom Caucus, the Tea Party crazies in the House of Representatives, is now interrogating Hillary Clinton. This should be interesting. Let's go to this. Test. No mention of a demonstration. But the best evidence is Greg Hicks, the number two guy in Libya, the guy who worked side by side with Ambassador Stevens. He was asked if there had been a protest, would the ambassador have reported it? Mr. Hicks' response, absolutely. For there to have been a demonstration on Chris Stevens' front door and him not to have reported it is unbelievable, Mr. Hicks said. He said, secondly, if it had been reported, so this is would Republicans have been out the back door within minutes rather than and there was asking. a back gate. Very interesting. Everything points to a terrorist attack. We just heard from Mr. Pompeo about the long history of terrorist incidents, terrorist violence in the country. And yet five days later, Susan Rice goes on five TV shows and she says this. Oh, this is the Fox, Benghazi the whole Fox News thing. Benghazi was a spontaneous reaction as a consequence of a video. A statement we all know is false. But don't take my word for it. Here's what others have said. Rice was off the reservation off the reservation on five networks, White House worried about the politics. Republicans didn't make those statements. They were made by the people who work for you in the Near Eastern Affairs Bureau, the actual experts on Libya in the State Department. So, if there's no evidence for a video-inspired protest, then where'd the false narrative start? Started with you, Madam Secretary. At 10.08, on the night of the attack, you released this statement. Some have sought to justify the vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted on the internet. At 10.08, with no evidence, at 10.08, before the attack is over, at 10.08, when Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty are still on the roof of the annex fighting for their lives, the official statement of the State Department blames a video. Why? During the day on September 11th, as you did mention, Congressman, there was a very large uh, protest against our embassy in Cairo. Protesters breached the walls. They tore down the uh, American flag. Uh, and it was of grave concern to us because the inflammatory video had been shown on Egyptian television, which has a broader uh, reach than just inside Egypt. And if you look at what I said, I referred to the video that night in a very specific way. I said, some have sought to justify the attack because of the video. I used those words deliberately, not to ascribe a motive to every attacker, but as a warning to those across the region uh, that uh, there was no justification for further attacks. And in fact, uh, during the course of that week, uh, we had many attacks that were all about the video. We had people breaching the walls of our embassies in Tunis and Khartoum. We had people, Madam thankfully Secretary. not Americans, dying Secretary at um, protests. But that's what was going on, Congressman. Secretary Clinton, I appreciate most of those attacks were after the attack on the uh facility in, in Benghazi. You mentioned Cairo. It was interesting what else Ms. Uh, Ms. Newland said that day. She said, uh, if pressed by the press, if there's a connection between Cairo and Benghazi, she said this, there's no connection between the two. So here's what troubles me. Your experts knew the truth. Your spokesperson knew the truth. Greg Hicks knew the truth. But what troubles me more is I think you knew the truth. Oh, I want to show you a few things her here. Of being a liar? You're looking at an email you sent to your family. Here's what you said at 11 o'clock that night, approximately one hour after you told the American people it was a video, you say to your family, two officers were, were killed today in Benghazi by an Al-Qaeda-like group. You tell, you tell the American people one thing, you tell your family an entirely different story. Also, on the night of the attack, you had a call with the president of Libya. Here's what you said to him. Ansar al-Sharia is claiming responsibility. Wouldn't you love to have the video Mr. or the uh, emails, the, the five million emails charge, from the Bush administration of Karl Rove and Dick Cheney and, and, and finally, George W. Bush, where they used the private server, the GW Bush 43.com server, hours, uh, where they were talking about the war in Iraq and all that kind of stuff? It would have been fascinating. But of course, nobody's going to investigate any of those kind of things, because after all, that was 
a uh, a Republican president. Uh, back to the Not back to protest. Jim Jordan. Let me read that one more time. We know, not we think, not it might be, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. State Department experts knew the truth. You knew the truth, but that's not what the American people got. And again, the American people want to know why. Why didn't you tell the American people exactly what you told the Egyptian prime minister? Well, I think if you look at the statement that I made, I clearly said that it was an attack, and I also said that there were some who tried to justify Secretary it Clinton, on, the call, basis, on the basis of the video, Congressman, and I but, think but, it's... But, but, and, but real quick, calling it an attack is like saying the sky's blue. Of course it was an attack. Well, you know, I mean, it we shortly, want to know the truth. This, the statement you sent out was a statement on Benghazi, and you say vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material on the internet. If that's not she looks like she's dealing a video, with a child here. Is. This is an amazing gesture on her face. And that's certainly how the people face. saw it. Well, well, Congressman, there was a lot of conflicting information that we were trying to make sense of. The situation was very fluid. It was fast moving. There was also a claim of responsibility by Ansar al-Sharia. And when I talked to the Egyptian prime minister, I said that this was uh, a claim of responsibility by Ansar al-Sharia, by uh, a group that was affiliated or at least wanted to be affiliated with al-Qaeda. Sometime after that, the next, next day, early the next morning after that, on the 12th or 13th, they retracted their claim of responsibility. Um, Secretary. And I think if, if you look at what all of us were trying to do, and we were in a position, Congressman, of trying to make sense of a lot of incoming information and Madam, watch the way the intelligence community tried to make sense of it. Madam and Secretary, so all I there can was say not is conflicting, nobody... There was not conflicting information the day of the attack because your press secretary said, if pressed, there's no connection between Cairo and Benghazi. It was clear. You're the ones who muddied it up, not the, not the information. Well, there's no connection. Here's what, here's what I think is going on. Here's what I think is going on. Let me show you one more slide. Again, this is from Victoria Nuland. She's got, she's got her, her face in her hand. She says to Jake Sullivan. <laughs> she's like. Philippe Rhinus. Subject line reads this. Romney's statement on Libya. Email says, this is what Ben was talking about. I assume Ben is the now somewhat famous Ben Rhodes author of the Talking Points memo. This email is at 1035, 27 minutes after your 1008 statement. 27 minutes after you've told everyone, it's a video, while Americans are still fighting because the attack's still going on, your top people are talking politics. Seems to me that night you had three options, Secretary. You could tell the truth, like you did with your family, like you did with the Libyan president, like you did with the Egyptian prime minister. Tell them it was a terrorist attack. You could say, you know what, we're not quite sure. Don't, don't really know for sure. I don't, I don't think the evidence is there. I think it's all in the first one, but you could have done that. But you picked a third option. You picked the video narrative. You picked the one with no evidence, and you did it because Libya was supposed to be... We still don't Mr. know Rossman who produced that out, video, do we? great success story for the Obama White House and the Clinton State Department. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. He went to and jail. a key campaign theme that year was GM's alive, bin Laden's dead, Al-Qaeda's on the run. And now you have a terrorist attack. And it's a terrorist attack in Libya. And it's just 56 days before an election. You can live with a protest about a video. That won't hurt you. But a terrorist attack will. So you can't be square with the American people. These are not questions. Tell your family it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. You can tell the president of Libya it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. And you can tell the Egyptian prime minister it's a terrorist attack, but you can't tell your own people the truth. Madam Secretary, Americans can live with the fact that good people sometimes give their lives for this country. They don't like it. They mourn for those families, they pray for those families, but they can live with it. But what they can't take, what they can't live with, is when their government's not square with them. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, you're welcome to answer the question if you would like to. Take well, I wrote a whole chapter about this in my book, Hard Choices. I'd be glad to send it to you, Congressman, because I think the 
insinuations uh, that you are making do a grave disservice to the hard work that people in the State Department, the intelligence community, the Defense Department, the White House did during the course of some very confusing and difficult days. There is no doubt in my mind that we did the best we could with the information that we had at the time. And if you'd actually go back and read what I said that night, I, I, was, very, I was very careful in saying that some have sought to justify. In fact, the man that has been arrested as one of the ringleaders of what happened in Benghazi, Ahmed Abu Qatala, is reported to have said it was the video that motivated him. None of us can speak to the individual motivations of those terrorists uh, who uh, overran our compound and who attacked our CIA annex. There were probably a number of different motivations. 